Good day learners! Today, you will learn about images formed by curved mirror. Are you ready? Let's learn the fascinating world of curved mirrors. To be guided, let us know the learning competency which is a line from the milk. So our learning competency is predict the qualitative characteristics, orientation, type, and magnification of images formed by plane and curved mirrors and lenses. Our CG code S10FE2G50. Our learning objectives are first predict the qualitative characteristics, location, orientation, type, and magnification of images formed by curved mirrors. Number two, perform ray diagramming for concave mirrors. Number three, solve problems using mirror equation. Number four, value the importance of knowing the concept of reflection. Before you proceed to the lesson proper, let us first take the pre-assessment to know the level of your previous knowledge. You will only be given 15 seconds to answer each question. Are you ready? Let us get started. Question number one. Which of the following statements can best describe the image formed by a concave mirror when the object is at a distance farther than the center of curvature of the mirror? Is it A, virtual, erect and bigger than the object? Is it B, real, inverted and bigger than the object? Letter C, real, inverted and smaller than the object? Or letter D, virtual, upright and smaller than the object? The correct answer is letter C, real, inverted, smaller than the object. Number 2. As the distance of an object from a converging mirror decreases, the image A moves towards the mirror and increases in size, B moves toward the mirror and decreases in size, C moves away from the mirror and decreases in size, letter D moves away from the mirror and increases in size. The correct answer is Letter D moves away from the mirror and increases in size. Number 3. Rays of light traveling parallel to the principal axis of a concave mirror will come together blank. A. At infinity. B. At the focal point. C. At the center of curvature. Or letter D. At a point halfway to the focal point. The correct answer is letter B at the focal point. Number 4. The reason why convex mirrors are used as rear view mirrors in vehicles is because A. It is more attractive. B. It has wider field view. C. It produces real image. Or letter D. It produces virtual image. The correct answer is Letter B has wider field view. For the five, fifth, and the last question, a convex mirror will always produce an image that is A. Is it virtual, upright, or smaller? B. Is it virtual, upright, and larger? C. Is it real, upside down, and smaller? Or letter D. Is it virtual, upright, and same size? The correct answer is letter A. It's virtual, upright, and smaller. Now, please count the number of the correct responses. If you got a score below 4, then this video is right for you. If you got a score of 5, you may skip this video. Let's proceed to the lesson. In the previous lesson, you learned the concept of plane mirrors. You also learn the theory of reflection which states that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Today, our topic is all about the curved mirrors. Are you ready to study curved mirrors? Aha! I know you're ready! 
Let us first define curved mirror. A reflecting surface in which its section is a section of a sphere. There are two kinds of curved mirrors, the concave and the convex. The first type of curved mirror is what we call concave mirror. It is also known as the converging mirror and the inner side of the spherical mirror is reflecting. As you can observe, the person on the right who is looking in a concave mirror, his image is upside down. The second type of curved mirror is what we call convex mirror. The outer side of the spherical mirror is reflecting and it is also called a converging mirror. The picture on the right is an example of a convex mirror. Many students got confused with the difference between a real image and a virtual image. Can you spot the difference between the two? Yes, a real image is formed when rays converge, while a virtual image is formed when rays appear to diverge. Furthermore, a real image is formed by the collection of the focus points actually made by converging rays. Converging rays are rays that are produced after incident rays hits a converging mirror or a concave mirror. While a virtual image is formed by the collection of focus points made by extensions of diverging rays, which are produced after incident rays hit a convex mirror. Are you familiar with the terms used in a concave mirror? Well, in a concave mirror, there is a concave mirror, the line which is also known as the principal axis, the center of curvature, the focal point, the vertex, the radius, and the focal length. The two rules of reflection for concave mirrors. It is important to know the rules of reflection for concave mirror because this will be our guide for ray diagramming later. The first rule is any incident ray traveling parallel to the principal axis on the way to the mirror will pass through the focal point upon reflection. The second rule is any incident ray passing through the focal point on the way to the mirror will travel parallel to the principal axis upon reflection. Sounds too easy, right? Now, you are ready to ray diagram. Let us first know the steps to ray diagramming for concave mirrors. Number 1. Pick a point on the top of the object and draw two incident rays traveling towards the mirror. Second, once these incident rays strike the mirror, reflect them according to the two rules of reflection for concave mirrors. For the third step, mark the image of the top of the object. Repeat the process for the bottom of the object. Those are the steps for ray diagramming. Did you know that objects can be placed in different places in front of a concave mirror? The object can be placed beyond C, at C or center of curvature, between center of curvature and the focal point, at focal point, or between F focal point and the vertex. Let's have an example. If an object is placed beyond the center of curvature, Let's have an example when an object is located beyond the center of curvature. 
a right side up object is located above the principal axis. The object is placed beyond the center of curvature. So how will we describe the image form? The image is upside down and the image position between the center of curvature and the focal point. Let's have the object is located at the center of curvature. A right side up object is located above the principal axis. The object is placed at the center of curvature. The image is upside down and the image position is at the center of curvature. The goal of a ray diagram is to determine first size. Is it smaller or bigger than the object? Two, location. Is it beyond C or at F or between C and F or etc.? Orientation. Is it upright or upside down? Four, type of image. Is it real or virtual? You are ready now to take your first activity, ray diagramming for a concave mirror. Complete the table below by indicating the location, size, orientation, and the type of the image. Perform ray diagramming so that you can identify the image. I will give you time to fill in the table with the correct answer. You may pause the video, look back to the discussion about ray diagramming especially on the steps of doing ray diagram. Ray diagrams can be used to determine the image location, size, orientation, and type of image form of objects when placed at a given location in front of a concave mirror. Ray diagrams provide useful information about object image relationships, yet fail to provide the information in a quantitative form. To obtain this type of numerical information, it is necessary to use the mirror equation and the magnification equation. The mirror equation expresses the quantitative relationship between the object distance, the image distance, and the focal length. Please take note of the equation 1 over F equals 1 over DO plus 1 over di. F stands for the focal length. D sub O or DO means object distance and di is the image distance. The magnification equation. The magnification equation relates to the ratio of the image distance and the object distance, the ratio of the image height and object height. It has this formula where M is, a, is the magnification, H i is the height of the image, H o height of the object, my equals negative D i over D o, where D i stands for the image distance and D o is the object's distance. Please take note of the equations. Students, it is very important that you know the sign convention for mirrors. F is positive if the mirror is concave. F is negative if the mirror is convex. Q is positive if the image is real and located on the object side of the mirror. Q is negative if the image is virtual and located behind the mirror. H is positive if the image is upright. H is negative if the image is inverted. Now, let's have a sample exercise using mirror equation. Kindly get a piece of paper, a ball pen, and a calculator. Number 1. 
If 5 cm tall light bulb is placed at a distance of 45 cm from a concave mirror having a focal length of 10.5 cm, determine the image distance and the image size. The first thing to do is to look for the image distance so that we can solve the image size. Step 1. Identify the givens. Height of the object is equals to 5 cm. High a distance of the object is 45 cm and the focal length of the mirror is 10.5 cm. Step 2. Identify what is asked. Image distance and the height of the image. Step 3. Identify the formula. 1 over F is equals to 1 over DO plus 1 over DI. This is the mirror equation, right? Step 4. Substitute values. 1 over F is e where F is equals to 10.5 centimeters is equals to 1 over DO, the distance of the object is equals to 45 centimeters plus 1 over DI. Step 5. Divide numerator by denominator. 1 divided by 10.5 centimeters is equals to 0 0.0952 centimeters to the power of negative 1 is equals to 1 over 45 centimeters is equal 1 divided by 45 is equals to 0 0.0222 centimeter to the power of negative 1 plus 1 over di. Step 6. Transpose values. 0 0.0952 centimeter to the power of negative 1 minus 0 0.0222 centimeter to the power of negative 1 is equals to 1 over di. Subtract, and that will lead us to the answer of 0.073 cm to the power of negative 1 is equals to 1 over di. Now, we can solve for the image distance, which is the distance of the image is equals to 13.70 cm. Now that we have the image distance, let's look for the image size. For the image size, we are going to use the magnification equation. Step 1, identify the givens. Step 2, identify what is asked. So we already find out what is the image distance. So for this, we are looking for the image size. Step 3. Identify the formula. HI is e over HO is equals to negative DI over DO. Step 4. Substitute values. HI divided by, by 5.0 cm is equals to negative 13.7 cm over 45 cm. So, H or HI is equals to negative 5.0 centimeters multiplied to 13.7 centimeters over 45 centimeters. And after solving, we have now the image size which, which is equals to negative 1.2 centimeters. Since the value of image height is negative, we can conclude that it is an inverted image. And as you can see, the height of the object decreases. Now, this is your activity number two, enrichment exercises. What is the image distance and image height if a seven 0.00 cm tall is placed 30 cm from a concave mirror having a focal length of 10 cm. 
Please leave your answer to the question below which will serve as your attendance for today. For your activity number three, which is application, cite a situation in your daily routine which uses the concept of reflection and then you explain. Before I end the discussion, let me first check your understanding by taking the post assessment. Are you ready? You will only be given 15 seconds each question. After the time, the answer will be revealed. You may pause the video if you need more time. God bless! Question number 1. If you wish to have a magnified image of your face for applying makeup or shaving, the mirror you will use must be A. A plain mirror B. A concave mirror C. A convex mirror or letter D. None of these The correct answer is A concave mirror Number 2. What kind of mirror is used by department stores to give a wider area and smaller image of the shoppers? Is it A. Plain mirror B. Concave mirror C. Convex mirror Or letter D. None of these The correct answer is A convex mirror Number, number 3. Which of the following statements can best describe the image formed by a concave mirror when the object is at a distance farther than the center of curvature of the mirror? Is it A. Virtual, erect and bigger than the object? Is it B. Virtual, upright and smaller than the object? Letter C. Is it real, inverted and smaller than the object? Or letter D, is it real, inverted, and bigger than the object? The correct answer is letter C, real, inverted, and smaller than the object. Number 4. A person views his image in front of a mirror. His image appeared to be real, inverted, and larger than him. What kind of mirror did he use? Is it A. Concave mirror? Is it B. Convex mirror? Is it C. Magic mirror? Or letter D. Is it plain mirror? The correct answer is A. Concave mirror. The last question is A spherical concave mirror which has a focal length of 20 cm has a 5 cm high object placed 30 cm from it. What is the image distance? A. 30 cm B. 40 cm C. 50 cm or letter D. 60 cm The correct answer for number 5 is 60 cm so how's your score? Congratulations! You are now the master of concave mirrors. Aha! That's all for today. Goodbye class. Please leave a comment below of what you have learned from the discussions today.